Hey, hey, everybody. I am here to review the chapter two test. I am sorry it's a little bit late, but better late than never. So problem number one. So these are just like ones on the test, uh, just a little bit different. And we did talk about these in class um, a little bit, but uh, it would be good to do a review. So if you want to try the problem now, right now, pause the, the video, try the problem on your own, see how you do, and, um, and then check to see what I did. So I'll give away the answer right now. So the vertex or the locator point, remember that uh, for a parabola, we have y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And so whatever we find in the place of whatever particular letter, that's going to be that number. So k is at the end. That's the constant at the end. In this case, I have a minus 4. That means that k is minus 4. For the h, the h is always after the x. So we have x minus some number. But in this case, it's plus 1. I thought it was supposed to be minus. Well, the only way you can switch the sign is if that number is negative. So that means that h equals negative 1. And that means you have both h and k. Remember that the vertex is located at h comma k. That's a horrible k, but I'll let it go. And so that's going to be negative 1 comma negative 4. That is where the vertex is located. Number two, what is the vertex of the parabola? So uh, in this case, you could either complete the square or use the minus b over 2a method. I'm going to go with minus b over 2a. I think it's just easier for everyone. So I'm not even going to do the completing the square. Uh, so minus b over 2a in this case, my b is 6. So I have minus 6, right? That's this right here. And then 2a, well, my a, there's no a here. It looks like there's no a, right? There's no number in front of the x squared. Uh, let's make sure our light looks good. Maybe. Uh, but there is a hidden 1 that we don't usually write because why bother? But what it does tell, help me with is it helps me understand what a is. So that means that a is 1. And let's not forget the 2 times. 2 times 1. And so what that gives us is that gives us minus 3. And what that means is that h is minus 3. And that's all there is to that. Well, then um, the next step to find k is you have to plug in negative 3 for x. So let's pretend like x is negative 3. So that means we have negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 minus 3. So that's 9 minus 18 minus 3. And that would be negative 12. So that means that k equals negative 12. And so we have our vertex at negative 3 comma negative 12. Uh, this one is just straight up solving the quadratic. Um, so I generally just use my method, which is I put in the x, I put in the x, and then I do the signs. It's minus, it, it ends in a minus, so therefore it's plus minus, plus minus. And then I look at the factors of 12. And so I have 2 and 6 or 3 and 4. Which one gives me a difference of 4? It's got to be 2 and 6. And then which one goes on which side? Well, it's minus 4 in the middle, so the larger number has to be negative. So it's minus 6 and plus 2. And um, this should really say 0. And so what that means is that x equals negative 2 or 6. That's one way to do it. Uh, you might be more familiar with the diamond method. So we have AC on top and B on the bottom. So for us here, that would be negative 12 and negative 4. And similarly to this, then I find the factors and the pairs, which one multiplies to the top but adds to the bottom. So it has to be 2 and 6. And then make sure you get your signs right. Which one's which? Well, um, again, it has to add up to minus 4. So you're going to have to have this be negative, And the other one is positive. And so just like on the other one, it gives you this. And the rest is the same. Um, and so that's how you do that. If you want the quadratic formula, I'm not going to do the whole thing. 
but you know, you just set this up, just identify your A, B, and C, and just plug it in, and that will give you the solution for X, assuming it equals zero, not Y. I don't know why they said Y. Okay, so you have to know for the test the basic parent functions. You have to know one over X, absolute value of X, square root of X, cubes, parabolas, and a little bit of circles. And we'll get to the circle in a bit. Uh, but this one right here is the square root of X. You can tell it's all positive in the parent function. Obviously, in the real world, you can't put negative numbers in a square root. So that means this is all positive and so that's one way to know, and obviously the shape of it. But you can always pick points, too. Like, if if I plug in 4 and I take the square root, I should get out of 2. And look at this, 4, comma 2. Sure enough, it's right there. You know, if I plug in a 9, I should get out of 3, because if I square root 9, I should get 3. So if I plug in 9, which should be, like, right around here, then I'm supposed to get a 3. Let's just pretend it's right there. Then and so that works. One one would probably be another one we could do, you know, at this point right here. So you have to know those parent functions. That is part of the test. And then you also have to know how to move them around. Now, this one's a cube, but maybe the one in the test is one over x or square root of x or x cubed or absolute value of x. So the point is that you have to know the locator point. The locator point is the center of that graph. In this case, it's easy. Um, well, it's not easy. I shouldn't say that. Um, but the vertex is here, right here at this point, which is 4, 2. And what's nice about that is that it tells us the H and the K, because remember that for the vertex, the X value is the H and the uh, Y value is the K. So that means that H equals 4 and K equals 2. And for these problems, we're not going to worry about A. So we basically already have what we need. Remember that for the cube, and you should know these for all the parent functions, not just the cube. Uh, and really, I should put the A in there. I should be, I should be thorough and proper. Just let me fix that real quick. Y equals A. So this looks just like the parabola equation. Uh, the only difference is that this is a cube instead of a parabola. I mean, you know it's cube because of the S shape. And also because it goes into negative infinity and odd functions can go into negative infinity. Uh, so then you just plug in what you got. And I'm also giving away that the A is one. So we're not gonna worry about A. So I have Y equals X minus H, which was four. And then that is cubed, right? Plus K. Plus and k we know to be 2. And so when they ask you for the equation of the function, you have to look at the locator point, find the h and k, then plug it back into the equation. Why is there why is there no equal sign here? That looks really weird. OK, that's better. So you have to do just like that. It may not be a cube. It could be one of the others. But the key is you find the locator point, you find the h and k, you plug the h and k back into the parent function, you know, the parent function with the H and K. I guess that's not really the, totally the parent function. But in any case, you have to do that for all the different kinds of functions. So uh, this one is the 1 over X. And um, I guess you just kind of have to memorize that. 1 over X has a distinctive form. It's unlike all the other ones. And so that middle point where those two um, yellow dashed lines meet, that is the locator point. We don't call it a vertex because it is a locator point. And uh, again, I keep forgetting to say this, but pause it, try it on your own, and uh, I'm going to solve it right now. So see how you did. Uh, so the locator point is right here at uh, 2, comma negative 1. So that means that my h is 2 and my k is negative 1. And I know that my parent function is 1 over x. And this is the part that you have to really get down. And you really need to know this before the test, is how to write the HK version of this. And we're going to leave the A off for now, because you can't really tell the A on this. Um, but it would be X. The H is always immediately next to the K, uh, X. The H is always immediately next to the X. And there's always a minus. So it's always X minus H 
And the H is not like out there somewhere outside the bracket or the absolute value or the square root or the denominator. It's always right next to the X. They're always right together. So that's one way to remember where the H goes. And the K is always at the end. And all of these different functions have that in common. And so all you got to do is plug in the H and the K and you're done. And on the test, you'll even have multiple choice. So you can kind of compare and... You can use process of elimination to get rid of some of these. So my h is 2, so it's x minus 2. And my k is minus 1, so it's like this, minus 1. Hopefully you got it right. Number 7, no way. Radius, circle, yes way. So remember that a circle, the basic circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Uh, but with the H and K, remember, again, it's always immediately next to the X. And for the Y, in this case, it's also immediately next to the Y. That's R squared. It doesn't look like R squared, but it is R squared. Should I fix that? I think I'll fix that real quick. R squared. Okay. I kind of made it bleed into the problem. I didn't mean to do that. I apologize. But uh, that's my H and K version for the circle. Again, I hope you pause and are trying this on your own and have already done. So they want to know, what's the center and the radius of the circle? Well, the radius has got to be 4 because the end part is R squared. So this means that R squared equals 16. And so that means that R is 4. And it has to be a positive value because radii are always positive. And... Uh, now, what about the center of the circle? Well, the center of the circle is the locator point, and that's just the H and K. So what is the H and K? Well, here's my H. Remember, it's minus H is 1. So either you just remember that that flips the sign, and so that makes it negative 1. Or I suppose if you're one of those really mechanical people, uh, you would actually say it's minus h, like x minus h, minus h equals 1, and then you would just solve for h and multiply by negative 1, and you would get h equals negative 1. That's one other way to think of it. And then you let, me, let me use a different color. And so k, it's y minus k, and so that means that k is 3. And so for my final answer, we have negative 1 comma 3. So that is the center of the circle. And the radius is 4. Number 8, what is the locator point? So this is a cubic function. Um, a lot of my students were confused on the H, but the K was pretty simple. Most people recognize that, hey, uh, this right here has got to be my K. And that is correct. That is your K. K is always at the end, so K is 3. And for a cubic function, we just had this earlier. Uh, y equals a times x minus h cubed plus k. And um, there's no a, but it doesn't mean that it's 0. It means that it's 1. But there's also no h, right? There's no h here. Well, that actually does mean that it's 0. So this means that h is 0. That looks like an n, but I promise you I meant to make it an h. H equals zero because is do you see an X minus some number? No, there's no number, so it's gotta be it's gotta be H. I mean H has got to be zero. And so that what's the locator point? Well, we already have the locator point. It's zero, comma, three, and that's it. Okay. Here's the problem that I promised my first period, especially that I, I kept promising to do it. And I, I never did. I did it for all my other periods. I keep forgetting that I didn't quite do it. But anyway, here you go. So it says a soccer ball is kicked down the pitch 20 meters. And uh, can I erase these things? Uh, 20 meters. It reaches a maximum height of 8 meters. Okay. So, again, I wish I could draw, draw a straight line. I'm not, I'm not that gifted. And actually, I should have done this. You know what? I should do that first easy to draw that okay so let's say it goes right here and this is 20 meters that means the vertex is halfway down 
So that means the vertex is above the 10. And how high does it get? They actually tell us it's 8. So this point right here, and I know I'm bleeding into the thing. Can I get rid of this? Anyway, I shouldn't really do that right now. So this is 8. Right? The, the height of the ball reaches 8. And so that means that this point right here, I'll make a little arrow, is 10 comma 8. So we already have the vertex of the parabola. We're almost there. All we need is A. So let's uh, fill this into the equation and then solve for A. So uh, let me uh, go down here a little bit. Remember the the remember the parabola is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, and so we fill in what we know, right? So we know that y equals a times x minus ten because that's my h. squared plus k, which in this case is 8. So we're almost there. All we need now is our a. Well, how do we do this? And it's actually quite simple. So sorry, first period, for making it sound hard. It's actually quite simple. All you got to do is plug in a point. Because remember, any point that is on the parabola is supposed to solve the equation. That's what the equation's for. The equation describes the parabola. So that if I give you an X, you can give me a Y. And so if I put in an X, I should get a certain Y uh, from the coordinate that is said to be on the parabola. And so what point do I have? Well, the 10 and 8, I suppose I could do that, but I don't know if that's really going to help. Let's do the 20, 0. This point right here is 20, 0. And we are going to plug that in. And I, I really hope to not run out of space. All right, that's my x and that's my y. And I'm going to plug that into that equation. See if I can make some room here and just squeeze this in. So instead of y, this y is going to become 0. And this is going to equal a times x. But x in this case is going to be 20 minus 10. All right, minus uh, 10. And I really am running out of room, so I'm going to have to squeeze uh, the plus 8. I'll just squeeze this in right here. And uh, then we simplify that. So inside the bracket, we get 10, and 10 squared is 100. So uh, let me just use a different color. So we're going to get 0 equals 100a plus 8. And then we subtract 8. And we get minus 8 equals 100a. And then we divide both sides by 100. And I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to do the thing that I hate to do and I always tell my students not to do is don't run out of space. But I don't want to I don't want to change slides cuz I want to show you. So, let me just rewrite that. So, I have minus 8 equals 100a. And so I divide both sides by 100 and I get minus 8 over 100 is my answer, except that you can simplify it. And so that becomes divide top and bottom by 4 minus 2 over 25 equals a. So we have our a and our h and our k. So we are done. I'm going to try to fit this in here. And so here's our answer. We have y equals a, which is minus 2 over 25. And then bracket x minus 10. squared plus 8. Sorry for that bleeding. Anyway, there you go. So that's how you do it. Uh, again, just to recap, you have the H and the K. They, well, they don't give it to you right off the bat. They said 20 meters, right? 
kicked it down 20 meters. We got to this right here. That tells us the um, the x value of. I mean, that tells us uh, how far it's going to go eventually. And halfway will be where the vertex is. So that's the numbers aren't going to be the same on the test, obviously, but the halfway point is where the height of the ball will be because midway through it's going to reach its height. So after 10 seconds, it reaches the, its its height, and um, that height is eight. So they give us the K, which is eight, and the H is half of the total distance. So in this case, that is 10. Once we have our H and K, we put that into the equation. Then we pick a point. That 20, zero works nicely. We plug it in, and we solve for A. Once we have our A, we have our H and our K. We just put all that back into the original AHK formula, and we have our answer. All righty, then that was it. So thank you very much for watching. Hope that was helpful. Um, good luck on your test.